Hi everyone, my name is Joros Budimak and I'm here today with Anna Maria Elena from the North Vancouver Tennis Center. When you are playing the do side or the ad side, that doesn't mean that you're responsible for the physical half of the court. You're responsible for only a certain area based on the shots that the opponents are able to make. These two yellow lines mark off the area that you're fully responsible for. Right? right? Pretty right. much, this is yeah. all you have to cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where would you approximately be placing yourself? Okay. Yeah. And so they're going from a cross court over here. And That's is right. that where you stand because you prefer your backhand? That's right. Okay. Yes. Do you know where I would stand? Because I love my forehand inside out. I love it. Exactly. You guessed right. And again, this is the area that we're dealing with. Yeah. So that makes full sense. Yeah. 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 And I love where you went there. That was excellent because, you know, you love your backhand. So you just went oh, right away here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is where I would stand. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm your partner at the net. So if I'm over here, I should have everything covered. So you can see that I'm, I got everything over here. I got everything covered here and here. And then you have just this side over here. Anna Maria mentioned that she prefers her left or her ad side because of her back end cross court angle in particular. If you are playing doubles on the ad side and your partner is covering the net really well, you should not really see many forehands. That's right. Right? Unless you prefer your forehand, in which case you can, you can move to the left a little bit and create that inside out. In doubles, versus singles, one of the key differences is that you're in one point potentially receiving a ball that's coming into your body, to your forehand, that way, exactly. You could be receiving a ball that's going over to your backhand, or it could be a ball from the net player that's going straight towards you. In singles, you're getting a lot more cross courts that's versus right. here you are getting some inside balls, some straight balls, some wide ones. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk a little bit about the differences in those three angles because I think mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. very much important to train all three of them regularly. We're too often training the straight and just the cross court mm -hmm. but not that inside out necessarily. What is the main difference for you mm -hmm. just receiving one or the other? For me the main difference would be the decision making between taking my forehand inside out or taking it inside in Okay. and based on that I'm going to select the footwork that I need. It's very important to have an early preparation with your racket. If you do that, then you can worry about your feet and your direction. Late preparation, you can only hit one direction and that's up. So let's right. not do that. <laughs> um, How early does that preparation happen? I always want to do it just before the ball bounces. Or if I can do it earlier, would be when the ball is traveling past the net. Right. For me, I want, to do, I want to be as comfortable as I can when I'm playing points, so I want to pick my best option. Oh, your what best can I option. Do best? Mm -hmm. Yes. If I'm in a training scenario, that's different. I want to make myself as difficult as possible because I want to train the stroke I'm not comfortable with. But yes, in doubles, if my forehand inside out is way comfortable for me, then I'm going to go for that. Right. I don't, unless I have no choice. Okay. So you know ahead of time what's your bread and butter shot so oh, to yes. call it right oh, and yes. so yes. the decision is almost eliminated then because you know okay that ball is coming i'm going to take my forehand mm -hmm. and then the decision where you go to is pretty much made yes okay yes. when you're receiving a backhand cross court yeah and you're going to go for that angle that that's your favorite yeah how would you prepare for that shot just go and swing through it yeah, that looks good. Again, very important, be light on your feet, yep. do your split step, and yes. then you want to have the leg that's on the outside move forward so that you can get in a more comfortable open stance. Okay. And then step with the opposite foot just to come across it. Right, and, and so, 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 so there, the, once you've landed, it's yeah. the left foot that starts your movement. Yes. So if you need to, let's say, move even further, that ball was there right now, but let's say the ball is even further, then that would just allow you to continue running of course it's very important to start with this leg because you don't you don't want to turn your back and then right. get unbalanced there so very important to keep the white leg first often we'll see players going here and then being blocked completely not able to rotate exactly. assuming you have a two-hander backhand this one you know even if you have to go further it's that left leg 
that allows you to get balanced, yeah. that allows you to transition your weight forward and through the shot. Exactly. Right? So we're not looking at planting this one. Yeah. And so what I like to think about it often is if I'm coaching someone to get that shot is get that left foot, get the left foot there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you mm -hmm. ever have sort of done that bit because this leg has to get to the ball first. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if it's wider, yes. if this leg isn't there, but this one only is, the front mm -hmm. one, there's you're, no rotation happening. Yeah, there's blockage. There's blockage. What would be your first decision as to why you're going to hit that inside out versus just hit a backhand? For me, it would be a big one. The pace that I'm receiving the ball at. Okay. If the ball is a little bit higher little. and slower, then that would allow me to go around that ball and go full in. Right. Um, because let's face it, the net player of yours, that's yes. in the do side, yes. if, if they're seeing a higher ball going through this direction mm. that's a high back end for them that's and right. that's a tough that's shot difficult. for many people that's yeah exactly that's difficult so again then the net player made the decision to allow me to hit it which mm -hmm. is more effective so then i can go around and crack my forehand crack my Woo! forehand okay <laughs> <laughs> so it starts with the preparation of the rocket the rocket is not prepared just by itself we want to make sure that our body is turning with it and from there as you notice my legs are already bending and my right leg is coming around it just to step forward and rotate nice when would you go for the inside in or the straight ahead down the line forehand from this spot for the inside in this would be more of an approaching situation when you receive a shorter ball okay or when you're again in the three-quarter court zone here that you can really go and hit either at their feet or mm -hmm. away from them in the alley mm -hmm. that's when i would go for one so the situation here would be i would have to be in offense and my opponents would be more in defense oh i see okay so if you're feeling like you can attack a little bit or mm. put them in under pressure more mm. so even yeah. that's when you could potentially go for that down the line right because again if they're right-handed they would have their forehand right there that's fair okay. exactly this is the ball that you're receiving just straight back so let's say you did for whatever reason hit that ball and the net player mm -hmm. was able to bunt it back mm -hmm. you have a volley or, or a ground stroke here mm -hmm. this is a ball that came straight to you mm -hmm. What would you do with that shot? With this shot, I would try to go back cross court, uh, and, uh, but not aiming as deep. I'm trying to hit somewhere in a three-quarter court so that the opponent is a bit off the court okay. and then potentially open up the middle okay. so that either me or my partner can aim the next shot in the middle. Right. Given that it's a little bit closer in, this would be potentially a great opportunity as well to follow that ball forward. That's and right. Go into yes. the net. Especially if you see if your opponent's contact is a little bit to the side away of the to the side. Yes, then of course you should follow that ball up to the net. Awesome. Uh, let's train a few of these sure. and see how they go yes. in real life. All right. <laughs>